In this series we'll build each kit from the Fantasy Village set by Battle Systems, discussing any construction pitfalls and build mistakes as well as kit specific build tips and possible conversions. Once everything is built we'll test a variety of methods to colour the edges of the terrain and then finally conclude with an in-depth overall review video of the whole Fantasy terrain set. Follow along and consider subscribing if that sounds like something you don't want to miss. If you haven't already, I recommend watching my introductory video to this series where I cover a few really key tips that will be relevant to this build and the others. So in this video we're going to build the outbuilding and the main piece of the marketplace. Everything I have is from the Kickstarter, so with regards to the marketplace we only have the, the main part of the structure, not the additional small marketplace buildings because they came in the um, the, the, the castle version of the Kickstarter. We're going to start with the outbuilding. We have a look at the Battle Systems official sort of guide of putting things together. They mention that there's a tooling error here where these pieces are meant to be half cut and not completely cut. So we have to do a little modification on this on this building. Loads of scattered terrain is normal. Uh, we won't be building those up today. That'll be done separately later. We'll build all the scattered terrain separately. Without these side pieces. There's a piece to be a bit cautious of just there. I can see that the printed surface is hanging onto the frame as I'm popping it out. So be careful with that. Okay, so we have a piece here that's got the uh, clip holes cut on both sides. And this piece is meant to be attached here with clip holes only on the ends. So that's meant to be a half cut. It's meant to sit like that as you fold it round. So that's all meant to be one piece there. And then you just, you're meant to only need to attach that one piece at the end. But the options really are to tape them on the, underside, um, on the inside. I don't really want to do that. It'll end up coming apart and going yellow over time. To glue them or we can use the scalpel and basically replicate these cut holes on those edges so I think that's what we're going to do just gonna use a pen to mark where we need to trim these uh, we'll just use a pen to mark where we need to cut the pieces that don't have cuts in them just replicate these cuts on the areas that haven't got a cut. Okay, so that took about three or four minutes carefully cutting those out with a knife. Shouldn't have to say it, but obviously be super careful if you're doing something like that with a scalpel blade. That's kind of one of those weird jobs where the way you're trying to cut it, you know, there is a reasonable potential there that if you do cut your fingers, you're going to cut them quite bad. So just be super careful. If you're not confident using a blade, then I wouldn't attempt that. You could quite easily just tape them or glue them with some something like. Um, like a proper hobby grade strong PVA. We're going to need some extra clips. Actually, we don't need all those clips because we have two there, so we only need two plastic clips. Okay, that's one of the ones I cut myself, I think, so that seemed to have worked. Yeah, that's definitely a cut that I made myself. That's, that's maybe a bit tight there. That'll be fine. Now, I saw on their video that they did mention that you don't necessarily need to use all four of these walls. Well, it's not walls, you know, four of these uh, side pieces. You could have like an open front, so that's another option if you wanted to cut some corners and not, not make this, uh, not do these adjustments. As I'm building through a lot of this set, I'm kind of 
slowly concluding that I'll probably add some glue to some of these some of these buildings, maybe the roofs. I'm, I'm not entirely sure yet, but like on this little piece, I'm thinking I probably will end up gluing the roof, but we'll, we'll see once it's uh, put together. Pretty square. I think uh, the reason why that's not so square is mainly because I had to make some of those cuts myself. Maybe they weren't quite, quite long enough. But anyway, that'll do. Okay, so usual thing, got a floor, well, you know, first story floor. Like these are the bits that I might end up gluing on, I think, because it's fine having the roof that sort of sits on, but yeah, when you're gaming, you know, potentially that's going to fall off. And having said that, now I'm thinking about it, maybe we better have the roof glued to this piece so that you can take the whole thing off. And, you know, if you wanted guys to be underneath there, for example. But anyway, let's build the roof. I am finding that these, some of these pieces are quite tight, so I'm going to just make sure that they're quite clean inside. Usual thing, just a slight bend on these, don't go over the top, bend them a little bit more afterwards. Kind of a tricky balance because you, you do want it to be quite tight, but not so much that it destroys the printed surface. When, you, when you're putting these roof, these top bars on the roof here, you do need to make sure you hold the adjoining clip, well, not the clip, the adjoining piece here to provide some backwards pressure. Because if you're just all pushing it on the roof, that's all going to break. Okay, so this is another one of the ones where the roof just sort of sits on top, and you have the option of adding in roof supports. Oh, yeah, there's two pieces there two roof supports with a, a groove in the middle there. So what you would do is pop those out, glue them on here and here, so that when the roof sits on top, it doesn't slide back and forward. Yeah, that, that does fall off quite easily. So yeah, it looks nice, but you know, if you're moving models around next to it, it's gonna be, it, it is gonna fall off. So those roof supports will help quite a bit. Like I said, I might actually, I'm, I'm thinking what I might do is put the roof supports, glue those roof supports on the roof inside where this floor piece is. So sort of in there and in there and then glue this floor piece onto the roof so that that is all one piece and then it sits on there as one piece. So if you do want to then take the roof off because you've got models underneath then then you can still do that same with all this battle system stuff unless i'm doing it wrong you do get a little bit of creasing on the outside of the roof I'll try and show you that here Let's turn that lamp down a little bit while we're so close just going to move that around and We'll see afterwards whether or not you can really pick up the creasing that I'm talking about. It's basically the lines where you fold the roof. Not really a big deal, if I'm honest. You notice it when you're sat building it, because you're sat building it. Once it's on the tabletop, especially with a lot of terrain, you're really not going to notice that. Same as with these clips. Um, you can see, like, these, these are designed to have a, a wood grain pattern on them, these cardboard ones. And then the brown clips actually blending quite nicely so that is one upgrade I would definitely want to do or have done so I would consider if I was buying the set again and it's up to you if you guys think that you want to upgrade to the brown clips or not. We're also going to build the main piece of the marketplace in this video so like I said I bought the Kickstarter edition but we got the one of the marketplace sheets in the in the village um, option on the Kickstarter. So uh, this will build the main market store with a bunch of scatter terrain, which we're going to leave to another video. So, you know, barrels, uh, a bench, you know, they should be pretty cool, but we're not going to build those today. We're just going to build the main structure. So take out all the negative space.
Okay, so we have the front, the back, and the sides. Uh, got a blue cloth and a red cloth, so we just need to make sure that those match up. I don't think there's any clips on this piece, this market stall at all. I think it's all it all just goes together uh, using the grooves that are in the pieces. Uh, one thing I would just say is as I was popping those out, as opposed to some of the buildings, these are these are quite delicate. Obviously, you know, that's fairly obvious. There's less card here, thin pieces. Should be quite sturdy when it's put together, but yeah, just be careful. You know, you don't want to snap that off, for example. Almost made a mistake there of pushing that down without supporting the bottom piece. So that's something we don't we don't want to do. If it had been really tight, and it is quite tight, oh, there's a chance I could have broken that off. And as I'm just saying that, as I push that down, that's bent a little bit there. I, I stopped pushing it just as I noticed it was bending. So you've really got to hold these pieces carefully as you're putting them together. That's actually quite loose there. So that's kind of a good example of where I don't mind when some of these pieces are a bit tight because I'd rather they be a bit tighter than that. Yeah, there we go. that's a little bit loose there. So that is an area where I will glue, I think. Okay, so I decided that I'm going to glue this piece. So I'm going to just do that now. I've got some decent, strong, tacky PVA glue, which is the main glue I want to use on this. Got a bit of super glue that should just sort of hold the pieces in place while the PVA sets. So like there, well, it is just sort of sitting there now, but that keeps popping out. So I think I'm gonna pop a bit of super glue on first just to keep it keep it down, and then use the PVA on the join properly. If you're using super glue, you definitely want a thick super glue. You don't want a runny one that's gonna be running around all over the place. Actually, to be honest, that bit of super glue will probably be fine. So I think we'll just go with that. Because the PVA will dry clear, sort of use it here in some of the joins. Let's try a little bit of super glue in there just to see how well it works on the card. Okay, so that, that super glue isn't the best option. Sort of soaks into the card a little bit. But partly it's me being impatient. I think really what you're gonna need to do is pop a little bead of PVA or super glue maybe a little elastic band. So for example, if you wanted to glue here, which I will do, pop a little bead of PVA because it will dry clear, you won't really notice that. Then you're going to need to pop a little peg or elastic band or something on there. So we've got a creasable roof, which will go on the blue side. Now this literally just sits on like that. Now this one we want to bend a little bit. Oh, there's, a, there's a lot of quarter cuts here, so we're just going to bend it a tiny little bit, just to start with. And it's going to sit in here. Yeah, that's another piece where I'm I'm going to glue this now, I think. You can get, if you've got it on tabletop and you want to get models under there, you can. So I'm just going to go through with the PVA now and just glue this a little bit. I know that PVA looks quite messy in there, but it'll it'll dry clear, so I'm not that worried about that, that should be fine. Using my high quality hobby clamps here. So as you can see, I put PVA mainly at the, the feet end of these, these posts, so we'll let that dry and I'll let you know whether or not that was adequate to provide the additional stability that I was looking for or whether or not actually you'd want to PVA down the whole lot. Hopefully this will be fine. So yeah, we'll, we'll come back to this once it's uh, once it's dry. I thought while I've got the glue out, we'll also glue this roof. We need to go back, go back to the outbuilding sprue. We'll get these two roof supports. Now, as I mentioned earlier, battle systems suggest that you glue these in a position whereby the roof would sit like this. Now, I don't think that's quite right. I think I think what they meant was that you glue them on the inside, so there, for example, so that when when it's when it just sits down on there, it then will not be able to move like this. Whereas if you did actually glue them on the outside like this, I suppose it might you might be able to pop the roof on to the the first floor ceiling here, but you're potentially going to just break those off, the bits that you've glued, if you see what I mean, because they would be glued on, that would be glued on like that, and you're gonna to have to 
pop that in and out each time. Whereas I think what they meant, I think what they meant was is that you would glue them on there, for example. So let's imagine they're glued where these beams are, and then the roof will sit like that, and it won't slide back and forwards. But I'm going to do it the way they actually said in the video, which I don't think is quite what they were intending you to do. I'm going to glue it this way. No, I'm not. I'm going to glue it the way they said, and then I'm going to glue this piece onto the roof. Yes, so that then when we take the roof off, the whole piece will come away. Now, you don't have to do it like this. I, I'm, I'm doing it like this because I don't feel like I'm ever going to want to be playing with the model with, with the roof off and the floor on. I'll be only really wanting to take the whole lot off to get the side. Let's see if that works. The first thing, let's just see if that is... Uh, luckily, that that does actually work, that you basically just need to put those there and there. So how I'm going to do this is, you know, I'm not going to be too precise, start measuring things up. I'm just going to use the PVA, pop these on, then put that in place. And while the PVA is still a little bit wet, we'll be able to sort of just move it around a little bit if we need to. Obviously, the PVA is going to dry clear as well, so, you know, could be quite liberal with it. Put that on there. I know some of you guys, maybe you're a little bit more careful with the PVA glue and don't like that overspill. But if that's the case, then you don't need to wait for my final review video to know that this terrain might not be for you. Because if you can't cope with looking at a little bit of PVA spill that you know is there, then you're not going to cope very well with looking at the clips that you know are there. Personally, I don't think you're going to notice it once it's on the tabletop and you're just enjoying your games that you're playing. But if, when that dries, you hardly see it. But if that kind of thing would bother you, then, like I said, maybe this terrain isn't the ideal terrain for you. I think for most of us, though, we, we can put up with that. Okay, so those would sit there. And the roof piece goes there. Make sure we got the trap door opening down, I think. So I think what I'm going to do now, then, is just add some PVA to these edges. And the beauty of doing this while the PVA is wet, you can see that those struts inside are just sliding down the board a tiny bit, which is fine. Okay, so we'll go with that. No, let's get that actually a little bit straighter. It's not quite straight on there. So what I'm thinking here is that that floor needs to sit around more around like that. But I'm not sure that that's going to work very well because based on the way I bent the roof. So I'm kind of figure I'm kind of going to go with and. You guys can uh, see if it works and adjust your builds accordingly. I'm going to leave it like that because the important thing for me is that this piece removes off properly. I don't mind if it sits on here a little bit askew because, I mean, you know, look at it. It's not a, a piece of, you know, architectural genius. This is a storage barn. The roofs are going to be a bit wobbly. I will add a little bit of PVA to this join here just for some extra strength. This is going to take a while to dry, but it's fine. So yeah, I decided that's how I'm doing it. So that's how I'm doing it. And I'll let you guys know if it, uh, if, if doing it like this causes any particular problems. So that's gonna have to just sit and dry for quite a while now. It's gonna take a few hours to dry that thick PVA. And like I said, while I'm here, I may as well, I may as well just uh, strengthen the bottom of these joints here a little bit. Okay, so I have noticed it was the feet with the cardboard clips that were splayed out a little bit more. These ones where we've used the plastic clips, they're not splaying out quite so much. I mean, that one is a little bit, but so I'm just going to go with that. I don't want this to become a project where we're having to like glue loads and loads and loads of pieces together. So go with that. Um, we'll come back and we'll see what it's like once the glue set. It sits on nicely there. Far easier to take that off as one piece. Obviously, if you're planning to take all these pieces completely apart for storage, then you can't do that. Uh, but I think realistically, that's not the way to handle this terrain. I think it's about building it with some modularity. So two pieces rather than one all glued together. You can still store it in a small box. 
but there's a lot more ease of use there with just that top piece coming off. So yeah, happy with that. Okay, so I have glued the two pieces of the roof together. I think this is going to make things a lot easier. Probably see a little bit of shiny here with PVA. It could have been a bit cleaner on there, but you know, it looks. I made sure the glue was on the end of the side here, so that piece now sits nicely on there as a single single drop. I much prefer that. Way easier. You're moving models underneath it. Nice and tough. Looks pretty good. Nice piece of terrain finished. Oh yeah, and the legs. A little bit of glue underneath on the legs. Just to sort of add some stability and hold those together. I say now that bit of glue has come apart there, so actually that's a good opportunity to quickly just test this other super glue that I've got. This Gorilla Glue gel wasn't working very well. So do you also have some do also have this super glue. So if you're in the UK, this is from Tool Station. It's a lot cheaper than the Gorilla Glue, so I'll just see if this works better. I'll hold that on for a good 30 seconds and we'll see how that works. Uh, yeah, that seems to work quite well. Haven't got too much of the usual super glue frosting. I had to give a quick blow on it to try and get it to cure a little bit quicker. But yeah, I might, might actually uh, use this super glue rather than the PVA, or certainly when I want something to stick nice and quick and I, don't, I can't peg it. Let's take a quick look at the marketplace and the outbuilding on the tabletop amongst the rest of the terrain. If you've enjoyed the video or found it useful in any way, give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment, especially if you've got a different experience with different types of glue, or maybe you've found some other tricks and tips for these battle systems terrain pieces. I'd really like to hear that in the comments below. It'd be helpful for anyone else watching this video if, uh, if you want to share your experiences. Next up, we're going to tackle the tavern, the biggest piece in the whole set. So stay tuned for that one. It's going to be quite an undertaking.